Hello, beautiful souls. I hope you have enjoyed episode one about the order of the blue rose. I do feel like I left a bit of a cliffhanger in the end of that video, but the next piece of content that I'm going to give you really deserves its own video. It is my hope that you share it, share it, share it out. I do want your comments. I expect them. And I want to preface the information that I'm going to deliver with a couple of things. The intense, intense search for the truth of what I'm going to share with you today has spanned many hundreds of years. And through all those times, through all those centuries, it had to be protected because the balance of power was not at that time under the light. We were fighting. We were living life after life after life to get to this point where we have reclaimed our power, not just as a human, not just as a person. This is not about me. This is about all of us. And it will rock your foundation. And that is because hundreds of years ago, people decided for us that we could know the truth. And they decided for us that our faith needed to be rooted in something other than the truth, which sets everyone up for failure. It was only a matter of time. Now the time has come and the beings that have spent their entire lives protecting the sacred bloodline of Yeshua and Maggie, I give a heartfelt thank you to. I'm very grateful. It has been full of evil. They have done things and said things to the bloodline that boggle the mind, all in an effort to suppress the truth. But I am here to tell you, truth is an energy that cannot be destroyed. You can try your very best and you will fail because truth is an energy that survives in spite of heavy battles, heavy war, psychic attacks, physical attacks. There is no line that they have not crossed. It is true that the light and the dark do not follow the same rules. It is also true that the light has won. Not only for our planet, not only for our people, but for the success of humanity throughout the entire universe and spreading Christ consciousness throughout the universe. It's because we have done the work. We have tapped into the truth of our soul and we have followed the guidance that has led us to this point right now. Source creator let us know about a week ago that the time is now. It is time for the collective to know the truth. Maggie and Yeshua are extremely excited to finally have this shared with you as am I. I am honored and I am humbled that I was chosen to deliver this message to you. Now, I am not a big influencer, nor do I strive to be. I have always endeavored to pass along to you the messages of truth that have come through me and through our ground crew. Are they always received well? No, but that's the nature of finding out something that you never knew before. It causes tumultuous energies to surface. 
And you always have free will choice on what you're going to do with the information. So again, I ask you to listen and receive with an open heart and truly take that 40,000 foot view and look at the big picture. Because once you see the truth, once you understand the truth, once you understand the truth, once you feel the truth within your being, you can never unfeel it and you can never unsee it and you can never unhear it. You just know it is. So let's dig in. Episode two, the sacred, sacred order of the blue rose. Order of the blue rose is a blessing. And those in the order serve their soul's calling. That's from Maggie and Yeshua. And this is also from Maggie and Yeshua. We are very excited to finally share the truth of our children and our family. Source creator, Mother Sophia, Yeshua and Maggie, Ascendant Master Melchizedek, are now all asserting it's time that they know, meaning it's time to share this closely guarded secrets of the sacred bloodline. Secrets that have been taken to the grave for many thousands of years. Secrets that were shared with other guardians and protectors. The secret of the sacred bloodline of Yeshua and Maggie. And their family. The truth as we know it, it's been discussed in many of my other videos because this is not a one off, right? Many aspects of truth regarding Ascendant Master Mary, Maggie, Yeshua have been coming through in smaller pieces. We could not put it all together. In this type of disclosure until today, until now. But I do invite you to go back and look at those videos and I will link each one of them that has little pieces of the part of the whole in the description of this video. Through channeled messages, we started to receive last year confirmation of things that our soul knew to be true. And of course, you're not going to find it in a text because they worked damn hard to hide and burn and destroy every bit of the proof that would upset their plan to control the masses and to keep the divine feminine oppressed, suppressed, and not known. It works to their advantage and they have failed. They lost control of this a long time ago. It was shown to Anna that when Mary had the pregnancy where Yeshua was arrived, that was a prophecy fulfilling pregnancy. It's not a virgin birth. It's not an immaculate conception. Mary and Joseph were twin flames. They love each other deeply. They had other children. In fact, one of the sisters of Yeshua remembers she has memory of protecting him as a baby from people hunting to kill him. Again, this has all come through in small pieces of information, but we could not put everything out together till now. The twin flame union between Magdalene and Yeshua was shown in visions, not only to Anna, but also to Ascendant Master Mary, AKA Mother Mary. So when Maggie chose to go full-time to the mystery schools, she chose, was connected to by frequency, Ascendant Master Mary as her mentor. In the the childhood phase of Magdalene and Yeshua, they were both being prepared for their roles as they would reunite and activate one another. In the course of the training, Maggie was a little further ahead in her activations for a while. Then she activated 
Yeshua, her divine masculine. And then he zoomed up and passed. But they are together, a formidable healing couple. Now, when they first met, there were um, lots of people around. It was usually at weddings or some sort of uh, gathering. And they were usually on opposite sides of the room from one another, but telepathically communicating the entire time. So they had a very, cl um, a very close relationship by discussion, by communion, by talking to one another, but it was telepathic and using their clear abilities more than in the physical when it began. Maggie says, she, when she first saw him, she thought, oh, this is what everyone's been talking about. <laughs> but it's very cute to hear them relate what they thought about each other when they first saw each other. Their supercharged attraction to one another from across the room was evident and palpable by many that attended these functions. The fact that the people didn't see Yeshua and Maggie physically together doesn't mean that they were not together. They were, and they were communicating the entire time through their clairs. Some speak of Yeshua's first marriage, a false marriage. The premise behind this story, which is completely made up, was made in an effort to diminish the importance of Maggie. So it was put out as if he was a grieving widower who had a void to fill and she was the next likely um, person to fill that void. It was not that at all. In fact, um, none of that story is accurate. Anyone ever around their energy could feel their infectious love and attraction for one another. Countless beings search for what they believe is an artifact when in truth, the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail is indeed the twin flame union of Yeshua and Maggie. This is not an artifact. It is not a, it's, it's not an, a token. It is the Holy Grail is Maggie and Yeshua and what they bring as a twin flame union. It's beyond measure. Yeshua and Maggie are divine galactic beings that chose to incarnate and anchor the higher consciousness of Christ consciousness frequency into humanity via their ministry. The ministry based in part on the foundations of the Order of the Blue Rose adapted into the way. Maggie's father, her soul father, is a Venusian that you may recognize as Ascendant Master Melchizedek. Her soul mom is Pleiadian. Yeshua's soul father is Arcturian and soul mother is Venusian. There is a strong Venusian tie there. Order of the Blue Rose is their birthright. It was always going to be theirs. Yeshua and Maggie lived a long life. They were targeted and hunted their entire existence. But for many years, they lived a joy-filled bliss life of love on their beautiful homestead they were surrounded by protectors of their secret the templars the freemasons and the priory of sion they had large networks of temples all across the country where they and others of the order of the blue rose with the sophia lineage and the divine feminine and divine masculine practiced the foundational components of the way. Maggie tells me that she had a total of 13 pregnancies. 12 made it to term and one was a miscarriage. She had three sets of twins, one set of triplets, and the rest were singles. Maggie welcomed the birth of her first child, Sarah, when she was 27 years old and she welcomed the arrival of her final child when she was 41 years old. Now I will say that since 
um, it must have been fall. I think it was around September, October of last year. We had the first realization, conscious awareness of one of our crew members having a 5D pregnancy. Once that was able to be known, we all were aware that we had 5D pregnancies and we were all aware of how those pregnancies were received, how they were handled, how they were so much healthier. And so I'm going to give you a snippet of that. The higher consciousness beings having higher consciousness babies, these babies, these souls chose and choose each parent just like they do here in this dimension. The difference is that the parents and all those caregivers around, so the shaman, the doula, the dolphins, the aunts, the uncles, the other siblings are able to communicate with these souls inside of us to make sure everything is good. They literally will say, you need to hydrate more, mom. You need to boost your electrolytes. We need some more potassium. Um, my sister had a cord around her foot, but I removed it. I mean, there are things that we are able to do because of that level of communication that, um, it's just not accepted in this dimension, but it is expected and done in the higher dimensions. And so the pregnancies are healthier. The diet is healthier. The being is healthier. The higher consciousness beings don't have these illnesses that are low vibrational and that are actually mis, um, misdiagnosed because of energy blockages, because they're clear, because they don't have that issue. So it's really a different set of circumstances. So try to not matrix the the pregnancies and the time frame and all and the age and all that kind of stuff, because it just does not correlate. It's a completely different set of circumstances that welcomes in and, and beings in the, in the higher dimensions live hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and have children for a lot of that time. So, um, Yeshua and Maggie had a total of 17 children and I have their names. And they're not in order of arrival with the exception of Sarah. We know that she was baby number one. Sarah, Tomas, Adelaide, Jacques, Daisy May, Maddie, Hannah, Lumi, Claire, Charlotte, Louis, Camille, Elise, Gabriel, Sephora, Yvonne, and Valerie. And then the miscarried soul that did not make it to arrival. Now, in time, there has been a massive amount of energy and funds dedicated to locating the Holy Grail, when it is a U twin flame union, as well as the sacred chalice. They have likened it to a cup that was on the table at the Last Supper. It is not a cup. Maggie's womb, the sacred womb is the holy chalice. It is shaped like a cup. The, the womb of every woman is a portal of life. Life comes through us. It is a portal. The sacred womb of the holy chalice is Maggie's womb that created the sacred bloodline of Christ, Yeshua. I know, I know. It's mind blowing to see from my perspective, how hard they worked to keep the, the truth from us. 
to keep us believing things that never made sense because it threatened their existence. It threatened their power. It threatened the amount of wealth that they amassed by driving these lies home, printing them and making it so, making it illegal punishment by death to say, think, or feel anything other than what they approved at the Vatican. But I am here to tell you, all children of the sacred bloodline of Yeshua and Maggie grew to a adulthood. They have all been very well protected on the homestead. All children were raised and educated in the temples near the lake at the homestead in the mystery schools. All children were married and had ceremonies right on the homestead. Most lived at the homestead many years and in the area that surrounded the homestead for many years. The homestead is in an area that you would know today as the Northeastern United States. All descendants of the bloodline are activated with the order of the blue rose and those souls that are growing in light of source will start to connect their foundational teachings automatically. It is a birthright. We are there. Unless that soul opts out of it, they are in it. The sacred bloodline of Yeshua and Maggie extend infinite love and gratitude to all keepers, protectors, and guardians of the sacred bloodline. It has been maintained in secrecy and sanctity for a very long time. And we are very, very grateful to the sacred bloodline of Christ Yeshua and Christus Magdalene for all time. Please share this video out. I hope that this information gave you lots of goosebumps because that's your clairsentient saying, yes, truth, finally. It can set you free of things that never made sense, like the Holy Trinity, divine masculine, divine feminine, and the inner child. The child, divine masculine, divine feminine, man woman, child, Holy Trinity. Nothing else makes sense. Nothing. The truth resonates because it holds a frequency that can never be destroyed. I hope you receive truth today. I hope it sets you free. I hope it sets you off on a path of discovery, of tapping into the wealth of knowledge that is within your being. And you too, start to get the activations of the foundational teachings of the order of the blue rose. Next video, I dive into the virtues of the order of the blue rose one by one. The first one is truth. And I'll see you next time.